Hello there, everyone. This is Stories of God's Faithfulness, and I am April Beaver, the Director of Digital Media and Women's Ministry here at First Reformed Church. And today I've got Allie Haverdink with me, and Allie is interning with us this semester uh, in the front desk, but she is also the daughter of Pastor Mark, and so she has been part of this congregation for a long time. And uh, so... We're going to do two things. First, I'm going to introduce Allie a little bit and let her talk. But then we're going to flip the tables, and Allie is going to do some interviewing yes. of me. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we'll just jump in, and I hope you guys all enjoy our conversation. So, Allie, um, yeah, can you just remind everyone of who you are, where you are in life, mm-hmm. uh, any of those Things. Yeah, yeah. So like April said, um, my name is Allie. I am a senior psychology major at Northwestern. Um, yeah, I graduate in May, which is kind of exciting and crazy, but but really good. Um, yeah, and then after graduation, I'm planning on going to Kairos University, which is a seminary in Sioux Falls, to get my master's in mental health counseling. Um, yeah, I have a love for people and their stories. So yeah, I'm excited to continue that. Um, but yeah. That's awesome, and you have almost grown up in this church, yes, been here yeah. almost your whole mm-hmm. life, Yes, right? since I was 11. Since you were 11, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. and um, you are no longer just this little kid running around, <laughs> you're a verifiable adult, <laughs> crazy, yes. and with adult comes adulting. Yes, yes. And how do you feel like you're doing with adulting at the moment? Huh, I don't know, it's... It's good. It's fun to be able to be a little bit more independent, I would say, you know, Mm -hmm. making my own decisions and things like that. But also, you know, a little bit scary, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to, yeah, figure out the future holds and knowing that I'm not going to be tied to my parents forever. Obviously, like I love them so much. And I, yeah, Mm -hmm. I, the thought of, yeah, being alone or like away from them is a little bit scary sometimes, but also Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for that next step. Because it feels very natural to just, yeah, be ready to, yeah, be on my own, do my own thing. Um, Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And you're currently dating someone? Yes, yes. Um, I'm dating Aaron Ekman. I've, yeah, we've been dating for about a year and a half, I would Mm -hmm. say. Uh, He's also a senior at Northwestern. He's a senior political science and public relations major. Um, So, yeah, it's been fun, you know, getting to know him better, I guess. Um, Sure. And, yeah, having those future conversations of of what our relationship is going to look like and yeah future plans yet yeah, are definitely being made so it's kind um, of exciting that <laughs> is exciting exciting yes. to feel like you've um perhaps i mean you don't have the ring on your finger yet no. but perhaps feel like you found the one yes yes and mm-hmm. this is the person that you want to build a life with mm-hmm. and and get to know and yeah. have all those future conversations mm-hmm. oh, yes. i love that and so that's what we're going to talk about today mm-hmm. is communication and relationships yes. Yes. and what, what, uh, how that looks. Um, and I have been married for, I don't remember, uh, 18 years. Mm. So I've been there a, a have lot. Have some experience for ha- sure. I do have some experience. It's kind of funny because I still feel, feel like I'm a no- newlywed, <laughs> you know, uh, I still feel like you get to that point where you feel like you've known the person forever Mm -hmm. and they've always been in your life, but you also feel like you're still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And so you can't have known them for that long because you're still figuring it all Mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I'm at in that journey a little bit. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's jump in and um, do you have some questions about... Yes. Well, you answered my my first question, which was how long have you been married? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to expand a little bit more on that on you and Jonathan's story a little, just to give sure. some context, maybe. Yeah. So Jonathan and I met. What I would feel like is later in mm-hmm. life. Um, it's really not. Whenever mm-hmm. you look at right. how long your life is, uh-huh. but we met was I was in my late twenties, and he was in his mid twenties. He's he's younger than I am, mm-hmm. four years younger than I am, mm-hmm. and um, I've just kind of chalked it up as um, I wanted to be married before, but he had some growing up to do, mm. so <laughs> I had to wait. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was um, just to not take the whole time with our story, but it was. Um, a whirlwind romance, kind of, not necessarily 
um, love at first sight, mm-hmm. but we knew real quickly mm-hmm. that we would be together mm-hmm. forever. And um, a lot of his friends and, and stuff thought, oh, you're going way too fast. But mm-hmm. it was it was really easy for us to know that we were we were right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we got married six months after we met mm-hmm. pretty quick. Wow. And uh, then started this whole thing of marriage. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has been so wonderful, but it's hard. Mm. It's hard, mm-hmm. too. And communication is one of those things that we have always done fairly well. Mm-hmm. And it has, it has really helped our marriage to be able to communicate well together and to talk through the issues that we might have um yeah so and I don't think that that's because of me at all I think that that's because of him (laughs) (laughs) honestly Uh but yeah communication has been one of those things that I feel like this is we this is good yeah yeah (laughs) I would yeah kind of just like going off of that you know, when you get into a relationship, or at least this is some of my experience, you know, people are always talking about like, okay, well, make sure you have open communication or Mm -hmm. that you're communicating effectively. Um, What does that exactly mean? So (laughs) for all those other young couples out there, you know, Mm -hmm. hearing the same advice of make sure that you communicate effectively, make sure that you're, you're over communicating or having clear communication. Yeah. What, how would you describe, what does that mean? So I would say that my communication now is completely different than when I was first married. Mm. And I would have said, I am so open in my communication. We are communicating so well. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that communication requires honesty. Mm. And first and foremost, communication requires honesty with yourself. And if you are not really aware of why you're getting upset or what is frustrating you or um, what brings you joy or any of those things, you cannot communicate them to another person because you aren't even really aware of them. Mm -hmm. And so it took a long time for me to be able to um, like myself, to be honest with Mm -hmm. myself Mm -hmm. enough to, to be okay with the feelings that I have Mm -hmm. to then be able to communicate them well to Jonathan. Mm. And uh, when I was able to understand that he was not going to reject me because of what I was saying or what I was feeling, Mm -hmm. it was so much easier for me to be open and honest with myself and then in tune be open and honest Mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And so that uh, it's open and honest communication is, um, yes, making sure that you you tell the deep parts of yourself Mm -hmm. and you don't communicate because you want to communicate in a way to help the other person perceive you Mm -hmm. in a certain light. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. So you don't, yeah, you you don't want to, make your words because you're concerned about a perception that they have. Like, what are they going to think of you if you say this or feel this way, right? Right. Yeah. So you instead need to communicate your heart and trust, especially with the person that loves you most. Mm -hmm. Trust their heart that they're going to wade through maybe incorrect words or wade through your strong emotions Mm -hmm. or any of that and actually see the truth of your heart in it. Uh, so yeah, trust, trust the person you're communicating. So that's, those are the two things I would say, be really honest with yourself and the person, and then trust that they are going to, they're going to perceive you at your best instead of you trying to have to shroud that or beat around the bush or, or put it in a way that makes you yeah, like seem different. Way. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate that you say that because I think, yeah, sometimes I can get caught in the loop of like overthinking of like, okay, what is Aaron mm. going to think if I say this? Or like, yeah, I kind of spiral and, and, you know, talk myself into things that are untrue about, yeah, yeah about like what Aaron's going to think. And something too that we've learned over this year and a half that we've been dating and communicating um, is just like 
Aaron can't read my mind, and it's not fair to him if I put thoughts in his head about what he thinks about me, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, yeah, I think kind of the same thing you were talking about earlier, how you have to be okay with yourself mm-hmm. and like be so okay with yourself and be like, okay, I am you know, feeling this way because of this. Um, but then, yeah, I'm, I'm learning that, yeah, Aaron loves me for who I am and I don't need to, you right. know, like be shameful of what I'm feeling or, yes. or be afraid of like, okay, well, if I tell him that what he said actually kind of hurt my feelings, like that he's going to leave or something like, no, that's <laughs> not true because right. yeah, he loves me and wants me to tell him when, when, you know, he hurts my feelings or if, yeah. you know, I get you know a little confused by something that he said or something like that. Right. But, but yeah, yeah, that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, yeah, sh- maybe along the same lines. Do you have any, you kind of talked about it a little bit, so we can move on if you want to, but just like any advice to combat those feelings of like inadequacy or like, um, yeah, when I was talking about spiraling into like negative self-talk mm-hmm. and do you have any advice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For that? Yeah. So I think that what you said earlier about putting words kind of in mm-hmm. their head or mm-hmm. kind of ask God to help you see every time that you are making up Aaron's mind for him (laughs) or choosing his emotions Mm -hmm. for him Mm -hmm. or deciding that he's going to think a certain way for him Uh, because he is was raised completely different than you Mm -hmm. he's completely different person than you Mm -hmm. and so you're not going to know all of those all of those ways and uh yeah i I think that that's one of the best ways is to not, uh, Jonathan and I talk about expectations, and Mm. it's a little bit that way, that you don't uh, put expectations on the other person. You don't put words in their mouth. You don't put uh, things Mm -hmm. like that. I think that that's probably one of the best ways. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and... I think too, like Aaron has never done anything ever to make me ever feel like, like, oh, Allie, like what you're feeling is, you know, unjustifiable or uh-huh. like you're being crazy or like he's never done that. And he like handles my feelings and everything so well. I always like tell him right. that I'm like, uh, I feel like you should just like leave me alone because I cry easy or like whatever. Yeah. But no, like he handles that so well. And so, yeah, sometimes I just like get so frustrated with myself for being so worried about what he's going to think because mm-hmm. it's like, literally Ellie like like he loves you for who you are you don't need to mm-hmm. be afraid of that and I think yeah that was really good what you said too like asking God to like put that guard up and that shield of saying yeah. no like let Aaron think his own thoughts like right. don't make up his mind for him and yeah yeah and we don't really unless we ask have God alert us to those things mm-hmm. it's just normal and natural and so we're not even aware right that we're doing mm-hmm. it because we perceive the world and we perceive we think that others are going to perceive it the same way as we do. And so we're it's just so natural right. to automatically think, oh, well, if I say this, then that person's going to react to yeah, this way. Or like think or, about this or think that I'm like this or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's so normal. But if we if we ask God for help on figuring that out, he'll, he'll point those things out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So going on with some other questions that I just jotted down. Yeah. Um, as a couple, what are we striving for when we communicate effectively? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I have seen lots of couples that their um, what they are striving for in a conversation or uh, in an argument or any of that is that they are striving for validation of the other person. Mm-hmm. So they are striving for to be. In, to put bluntly, they're striving to be right and for the other person to believe that they're right. Mm. Mm-hmm. That is not what you should be striving for. <laughs> if, I was talking to Jonathan about this the other night. So if you are, if you're having an argument with someone and you are right, that means, and you are striving to be right, that means you are striving for him to be wrong. Mm. Now, you love him. Why would, why would you want to be pushing for him to be wrong, right. mm-hmm. for him to mm-hmm. feel inadequate, for him to feel like his pride is wounded, mm-hmm. 
all of those things. So when when you look at it in that way, it's no longer a thing of, oh, well, I just want to be right. When you flip it and think, what does that mean for him? If I'm right, then what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So instead, the strive should be to um, help your spouse or your person in your relationship help um, them to know you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you should strive to know them Mm -hmm. so that being known uh we we know with the bible that and just in our hearts that being known and loved is like the biggest thing Mm -hmm. that we crave Mm -hmm. as individuals and so especially with that significant other that's one place that we can have some of that yeah so we should always be striving to to help them know us Mm -hmm. and striving to understand and know them Mm -hmm. and that that reframes any conflict right Mm -hmm. because no longer are you striving to win the argument of who took the dogs out last Mm -hmm. but now you're striving to think about well why is it that we even care Mm -hmm. and why is it important right right now and then you start realizing oh it's because we're stressed out or because um, one of us hasn't been it hasn't been an equal task and one of us is feeling offended about you know yep so it's a different different yeah striving Mm -hmm. for yeah yeah that's really good that's really good and I think that also goes along with kind of like kind of what we were touching on earlier like let them respect them enough to like let them make their own opinions without Mm -hmm. um like yeah putting those thoughts in their heads or or making up their mind for them but uh, yeah I really like yeah what you said it's like kind of a an area of respect that you can show them when you communicate effectively and openly and when you're saying things you're giving them the opportunity to yeah get to know you better and Mm -hmm. yes growing that relationship even more yeah that's yeah that's really good um okay so kind of shifting gears a little bit okay Um, So I grew up in an age, you know, and like right now, an age of social media, texting, Snapchat, DMs, things like that. Aaron and I actually started getting to know each other over Snapchat. We met in person, but then I was too afraid to talk to him in person (laughs) when I met him my freshman year. And so I started texting him um, on Snapchat. Do you think that that's always a bad thing? Because we always hear Mm -hmm. like, oh, put your phones away and just talk to them in person. And I know that's so important. Like, believe me. And I like, I love this so much. But do you think there's even any benefits to our mm. social media age and and relationships or do you think that it might just be negative well one thing that i've found has been really nice in a social media age is just that being able to connect throughout the day mm. it used to be um when people were married then they left the house they went on their prospective jobs and then they didn't even see each other until they got back together right. at night and you had all this stuff that happened throughout the day uh and it goes a long ways to be able to have a few touch points Mm -hmm. throughout the day and it's it's so much easier to have those with texting than say a phone call Mm -hmm. or stopping by his office or Mm -hmm. you know all those Mm -hmm. different ways so i think that that is really really good Mm -hmm. um i think where it might not be so good is whenever you are face to face Mm -hmm but you're still so consumed about... Yeah, like on your phone. On your phone. Mm -hmm. And um, so two things with that really is that um, when you are on your phone, especially with the other person around, um, it can't ever be a private thing. Mm -hmm. So I remember one time that Jonathan was texting with somebody and he and I had had a conversation about what was going on in the situation. It was a, like a work thing mm. or whatever mm-hmm. that he was struggling with. And so I was interested in what they were saying and how he was responding. Mm-hmm. And But he felt like, why are you leaning over my shoulder to look at this text? Mm-hmm. And and I, I agree. I should not be leaning over his shoulder to look at the text. However, he should also be open enough to, if he's having a texting conversation with somebody while we're sitting at a table, it's very good for him to tell me, oh, well, I'm texting so-and-so, mm. and um, not be defensive mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So if you're having a conversation with somebody on your phone Mm -hmm. and you're with your spouse or with with your significant other, um, I would say include them in that conversation Mm -hmm. and just say, hey, so-and-so texted me. I'm just going to send something back. Yeah, so you can be fully present with your partner when you're there in the moment. And there Mm -hmm. are lots of times where you're in a conversation with your partner and you get a text and then you're your brain just kind of like completely shuts off right. from them <laughs> yeah. and can, goes. And because we are, you know, we get on our phones, we get on our watch, we, it's just so instantaneous. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is really difficult to maintain um, a conversation with the person in the room. Mm-hmm. But being open and just know, well, when that comes in, you just share it. With mm-hmm. Most of the time, the other person's like, oh, yeah, respond to that mm-hmm. or yeah. You know, it, and it feels like you are together mm-hmm. even when you are having conversation with someone else. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I really think that building that trust from mm-hmm. early on is good. And, like, even having a conversation maybe, like, Aaron and I have had a, a bunch of conversations even when we started dating of, okay, like, what when we're together, what what's your expectation with mm-hmm. phones or, like, mm-hmm. um yeah, like if it's any of our family members calling in the middle of a date or something like we would pick up our phone because it's our family members, but maybe our friends, you know, that text can stay unanswered for a while or that Snapchat can mm-hmm. stay unopened for a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it definitely takes work and yeah, communication of saying, mm-hmm. this is like, I want to be fully present when I'm with you or, yeah. you know, let's maybe turn off our phones for an evening and just, you know, enjoy yeah. each other's company and, and yeah. actually just talk. Um, and yeah, that can be, that can be so good too. Yeah. And, um, there is no harm in, if you're wondering, asking, saying, Hey, especially if you're out to lunch or whatever, and you can tell there's this conversation going on on the phone, you can, there's no harm in asking, but if you find yourself asking daily, mm. often, you know, yep. then then that's probably a bigger conversation. Yeah. Either you are too nosy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or mm-hmm. he is not giving respect to you whenever you guys are together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And regardless, that requires a bigger conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. And I would even say if you feel like you're doing that, I I would go to... I would go to Jonathan and say, do you think I'm being nosy? Because mm-hmm. I feel like I've been asking you about this all the time, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. 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 That's good. That's good. Um, okay. Shifting gears a little bit more now. Okay. Sure. Um, what, this is maybe just like general, but what do you think are the three most important topics that young couples should talk mm-hmm. about when considering marriage? So um, you had shared that question with me the other day, and so I've been thinking about it. And I actually asked Jonathan about it, and he's like, that's too big of a call. That's, <laughs> you can't narrow it down to three. Okay, and then say, that, you can say five then. <laughs> wow, well, you know. Um, but I think the expectations in every area are kind of the biggest conversations mm-hmm. that you should have. So with Jonathan and I, um, the, the conversation about expectations um, in the house on who does what mm-hmm. was a big topic of conversation. And the one of the biggest reasons that we needed to have a good conversation about it was because we completely disagreed. Mm. And, um, and yeah, so it was really good to see what those expectations mm-hmm. were ahead of time. But I would say that with any expectations. So what you what home life is going to look like. Are you guys going to eat together every night or are you going to watch TV while eating every night? Mm-hmm. What, where's that expectation? Mm-hmm. Um, what's the expectation for how often you're going to visit your family during the holidays? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I feel like a lot of those, especially early on, conflicts mm-hmm. in a marriage have to do with um, the thought that well everybody does it this way, yeah. mm-hmm. and you don't you don't actually know mm-hmm. that you really feel that mm-hmm. way until mm-hmm. you realize he doesn't do it this way. Mm-hmm. I thought everybody folded laundry this <laughs> way. Yeah. How you know? Mm-hmm. And you don't you don't know it, but those things that you feel strongly about that you have strong expectations on. Mm-hmm 
are definitely the ones that you need to talk about beforehand. Mm -hmm. And um, not that you need to agree necessarily beforehand, Mm -hmm. but just stating it helps a lot to know that Aaron might be in a completely different spot than you Mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. So expectations, and then the two other things I was thinking about, one is um, figure out and be able to express to the other person how you know you're loved. Mm-hmm. I think that that's the other person wants to love you. Right. So um, do the work if you can. If you don't know how you feel loved, do that work and then share it with them. Yeah. And then along with that is figure out how you fight mm. and share that as well. So are you a person in an argument that would, um, you want to get it all settled and you want to just keep barreling through with your conversation until it's done? Mm -hmm. Or are you someone that um, if it gets heated, you need a moment and you really, you really need that minute to, or day to be like, we, we got to take a break and come back. Um, And and you might not know mm-hmm. those things really well, mm-hmm. but see if you can before before you get married to the whole how do you feel loved and how do you fight and share that with the other person because I guarantee you it's going to be different. Yeah. And you're going to expect, back to expectations, you're going to mm-hmm. expect that the other person is going to fight the same way that you do. Mm-hmm. And it's not. Right going to look the same Mm -hmm. and so then you'll get hurt feelings because they they're not doing it the same as you so uh, for example the whole thing of taking a break Mm -hmm. someone that does not need to take a break is going to feel um, very hurt that that person needs a break they're going to feel like um, I don't understand why you don't just push through and we can get it done with they're going to feel um, offended and upset and hurt yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Whereas the person that does need a break, if the other person keeps pushing, they're going to feel the same way. They're going to feel like, Can't, don't you just care? Don't you care about me right. enough to, to let me lick my wounds just a mm-hmm. little bit and get my thoughts in order? Right. And you, you just ramrode me all the time. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't think when you're doing that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so, yeah. so that yeah. is beneficial. Yeah. I think too, and this is kind of a question, I guess, but so Aaron and I have talked a lot about, you know, what our married life will look like, like from very early on when we were dating too, we kind of both, you know, were dating with the intention of getting married. Like we weren't just sure. dating to date. Like, so we, we went in with the expectation of this probably will last a very long time. Yeah. So we, we talked about big things very early on um and right now we're kind of at the point where we're like we can have all these big conversations and we kind of you know land at the same spot or like resolve that Mm -hmm. you know figure it out um how much do you think is just like well some of those big things I guess like learning those big things just like when you're married like is does there come a point where you have to have to just like stop talking about it when you're dating and just like do the thing like just like when you're married I think that it's great to have all those conversations before you're married But I think it, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with continuing to have the conversations. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be wrong to feel like the conversation is settled and that it is the way you think it's going to be before you're married. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, Mm -hmm. you don't know yourself well enough Mm -hmm. to know how you feel about those conversations Mm -hmm. until you are married. And then the person you are when you're first married is not going to feel about the same way that the person you are when you're in year three Mm -hmm. or in year 10. Yeah. And so all of those big conversations is, it is so good to talk about them ahead of time, Mm -hmm. but do not get stuck in the Aaron believes this and, or we have chosen this. We've Mm -hmm. decided that this is the way that we're going because it changes it ebbs and flows and it will yeah. change over and over and over again because you change mm-hmm. and as you become one the bible says we 
we become one, right. we, we do, we change. Mm-hmm. And different things become important to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Um, yeah, I think just like holding the expectations loosely too is good. Mm-hmm. And like Aaron and I have talked about that too of like, yeah, we're 22 years old in college. How we view this, you know, scenario or this disagreement right now could be totally different when we're, you know, in our 30s, 40s. Yeah. You know, when we have kids, like making sure that the expectation is that the expectations will change. Right. I think. And we're kind of yeah. learning that right now is like, oh, yeah, remember when we started dating and we said, oh, we'll do this every week or like we'll have a date every week. And now we're <laughs> here and we're like, that is unrealistic expectation or you know things like that like things can change that's really Mm -hmm. that's really good um what are the things that you think or what's the threshold I should say of like you know bringing something up in a disagreement or like that made you feel you Mm. know a little like uncomfy or whatever and like what's another what's something that you should just maybe look over or say or like extend grace and be like well you know we're all human like should you bring up every little thing that bothers you or that makes you feel you know a little certain way or do you think that there's ever a time where you know you can say okay well like I would do the same thing in this situation or whatever yeah Yeah. that's a really hard question um and part of one of the reasons that's hard for me is because I think I do it wrong (laughs) all the time um I have a tendency um my response is always to overlook Yes, mine too. <laughs> and so my response is always that um, I need to turn the spotlight on myself and see where I need to change, where I need to be okay with, and overlook the failings of another person. Yeah, I yeah I really like that, that that's what you said because I've been working on that too because I'm the same way where I, I'm like, well, I don't, like I'm a people pleaser, right? And sure. e- even with Aaron, like the person I'm closest with, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, you know, like it's not worth getting in a fight over or it's not worth arguing. Like Aaron and I don't really argue anyway, so like I don't want this to be like the thing mm-hmm. or I don't want it to become a thing. But I think that's really good that you said, instead of focusing so much on like what they're feeling, focus on like what you're feeling and like why yeah. you're feeling it and then maybe decide from there like, okay, is it something to... Mm-hmm. to like bring to the table and say hey I think I feel mm-hmm. this because of this way I'd and like to navigate from there. one of the biggest things with that is that if it feels like it comes up often mm-hmm. then that's mm-hmm. probably what you probably need to bring it up mm-hmm. and when I say often I'm I don't know I guess often is different for different people mm-hmm. but for me I would think if it if it comes up a couple times a month then it's probably worth addressing right uh but I think that it's very important how you address it. Mm. So what I have noticed is that it does me really good because of the whole thing of that I, I feel like I should be able to fix it and I shouldn't feel that mm-hmm. way, is that whenever I bring it up to Jonathan that um, I, I really try not to say, well, you were this and that made me feel this. Yep. And you know, you're a psychology major, so you <laughs> yes. probably know all of this stuff. <laughs> but um, it helps me a lot to, when I bring it up to him, say, I know I, there's, it's been freeing to start saying this to him. I know the words that came out of your mouth were, uh, this soup tasted fine. I'm fine with it. But what I heard mm-hmm. in my heart was, it was, it was a C, and there's lots of room for improvement. Mm-hmm. And then you can say, is that what you meant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is that how you actually feel? Or am I misinterpreting what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and saying it that way helps a ton with, with the defensiveness. Yeah. Because what happens in communication is um, it's really easy to get defensive. Yes. Really yes. quick. Mm-hmm. And when you're defensive, then the conversation never goes well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Turning those you statements into I statements is is a huge thing in conflict mm-hmm. resolution, at least like what I've learned in some yeah. of my classes. Yeah. And it's it's kind of fun when you can learn something in the classroom and then like actually apply it because yeah. the same thing, like, um, yeah, I'm learning that too, not even just in my relationship with Aaron, but just in lots of different relationships, instead of saying, you know, you did this, you did this, you did this, you can, you can change it and say, well, 
I felt this when this happened uh-huh. and saying, yeah, exactly like how you said, like yeah. those clarifying questions too of, did you, did you mean it that way? Or could you, yeah, expand a little bit more on what you meant when you said the soup was fine, <laughs> you know, like, right. like what, what do you actually, what do you actually mean? But, and yeah, I think yeah. those clarifying questions are just also so important too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. With that whole saying I statements, and I think it is so good, but many people do it so wrong mm. because they say things like, um, I felt slighted when you did such and such. Right. And yes. they're like, well, I started with an I. Yeah. And then you went right <laughs> to a you. Like, yeah. So, so um, you kind of have to be a little... A careful, yes. Definitely careful. Yeah. Um, that you have to make sure the focus continues to stay on I. Yes. And doesn't go to... Yes. You. Right. Yes. Yeah. It is definitely so easy to be like, well, I felt this when you did, when you did that. Right. <laughs> like that's, that's not the purpose of an I statement. Right. <laughs> right? Let right. A statement. It's, it's to shift kind of the focus off of the bad situation and mm-hmm. yeah. Focus on like the resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also heard, um, in a few different like devotions that Aaron and I have got, gone through and stuff, um, talking about like arguments and disagreements now, mm-hmm. um, saying that it's it's you and your partner against the argument. It's not you against your partner. It's about it's, right. it's you guys together facing this this disagreement out there. Could you expand on that? Talk about that a little bit. That's an interesting way to look at it. And um, yeah, maybe you definitely do want to. To do what we talked about earlier is that you don't want it to be a you against him right. thing. Mm-hmm. That that's never never a good thing. Um, I think that figuring out what you want to know about the situation and uh, that that's so much better. I don't know about mm, you and him against an argument. I don't know how I feel about yeah. that. Yeah. It. it uh, yeah, um, it makes it seem almost like there's this monster out there that you are slaying together, <laughs> yeah. and and maybe so, maybe it is. Um, mm. But sometimes it's just um, there's actually no monster, right? And that really, if you just um, seek to be known and you seek to know, mm. there really isn't an argument there. Mm. Yeah, there, that's so good. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's not really, it's not really as big of a deal as you kind of think it really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, sometimes I just feel like, as a uh, someone in a in a young relationship, I would say, or a budding relationship, I don't mm-hmm. know, you get kind of thrown some advice sometimes mm-hmm. about like, okay, well, when you get in an argument, you know do this or like don't ever go to bed angry or you know like all like all of that and so sometimes it's hard figuring out like okay well I don't know what I'm supposed to do when this happens and and I would say that I feel very thankful that Aaron and I are both are both of our personalities are not ones to stay in arguments like we don't pick fights we don't like to right we don't like to debate or anything we we pretty much agree like on lots of things and I I know that's good and I also know that like it's healthy to to not agree on everything, right? right like you're right. Like you should have differences, right? And yeah. things like that. And so, yeah, I think just right now, in the stage of our relationship that we are, we're we're figuring that out. That balance of, of you know, what does it mean when we're arguing, and like, what does it mean when you like bring up this topic that we do disagree on? And it's not me saying, oh, I want to fight you, like fight with you, because like I just want to prove that I'm right. But I think expressing those different opinions or different feelings can like also be a way of showing them that you love them and like trust them enough with with your honest opinion and saying Mm -hmm. I know we might disagree about this or like I know that we might you know butt heads a little bit on this issue but let's like come together and figure it out and talk about it and I also yeah so I was just wondering how do you feel about that what do you think any more advice on Mm. on disagreements yeah so um, disagreements are hard mm. and and they're hard for lots of reasons I feel like the hardest ones are not when you necessarily disagree on on something like let's say you disagree on whether or not the silverware should be tines up or tines down <laughs> in the dishwasher you know <laughs> 
disagreements on something objective um, out there are not the hard disagreements. Mm -hmm. They're not the hard fights. Mm -hmm. The hard ones are the ones where um, you or he feels um, slighted or um, hurt or inconvenienced, where where there's there's an uncomfortable or really bad feeling that you have inside that the other person caused. Mm -hmm. Those are the hard fights. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that um, really are challenging on how to navigate in a way where you can come together mm -hmm. and um, come out of it closer and not more wounded. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really difficult to tell the person that you love most um, that you are hurt mm -hmm. because of an action that they did. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, you, at least for myself, um, excuse it over and over again because you really don't want to have that conversation. Right, yeah. You really don't want to tell them um, I'm hurting mm -hmm. because of whatever it is. Um, and those are the ones that require the most tenacity to stay and to finish it. And not just put a Band-Aid right. on it, mm -hmm. but to actually dig out the splinter or dig mm -hmm. out the wound mm -hmm. and see what act what what really is causing it because if you don't if you just let's say your Aaron does something and you tell him and he says well I'm sorry and then you say that's okay I forgive you mm -hmm. um chances are really good if you don't if you, he doesn't know why it hurts you mm -hmm. or you're unable to know why it hurt you and you, so you can't express that well mm -hmm. chances are really good that a month or two down the line, something similar is going to happen, yeah. and it's going to just keep repeating yeah. itself mm -hmm. over and over. And I'm sure that you've, with all your psychology classes and stuff, most of the time the thing that's on the outside, whatever the thing is that the person's apologizing for, that is actually not the splinter. That is not not the issue. The issue is, is something deeper. Jonathan yeah. and I had... Um, guess you could call it a fight um I don't know if you'd call it that something like that recently where um he was getting frustrated um he's getting frustrated with me about something so when he um for instance it was several times he was getting frustrated with me but one of them for instance was we were playing Pictionary with our kids mm. And, you know, you have all the different colors of yellow is this, blue is this, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was convinced that blue meant object and yellow meant person, place, or animal. And he's like, no, it's the other way. And I was like, no, it is. And so he grabbed the thing and showed me. And I was wrong. Mm. Okay. Which is, is fine. I'm wrong. Um, let's go on. But the problem was that he was getting frustrated with me about some of those things, some things like that over and over and over again. And so, oh, I don't know, it was probably a couple days later, maybe it's the next day or whatever, and I just was like, you are just frustrated with me all the time about, and he's like, well, you question me all the time. Mm. And so then we had, then we have this discussion about, all right, well, what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. Am I actually, because of something that's going on in my life and I'm not okay with some stuff, am I actually being questioning? Mm -hmm. And anything that he says, I'm going to say, no, you're wrong mm -hmm. about stuff. Mm -hmm. Or is it the other way where um, we are still having the same sort of conversations that we always do where... We're both smart people, so we both, you know, we both believe mm -hmm. things. Right. We both have opinions about yes. stuff. We both, mm -hmm. and are we having the same conversations that we always do? But he's taking offense to it more mm -hmm. than he normally mm -hmm. would, and 
So those are the hard conversations to have and the important ones to have and the ones that you can't just, you can't just say, well, you're right about the, about Pictionary and I was wrong and I'm sorry and let's just move on Mm -hmm. Uh, because that wasn't the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue was that when I was wrong, he was mad about me having questioned Mm -hmm. if he was right. So that was the issue. Yeah. And so those are the hard, those are the hard fights. Yeah. And um, so, you know, your question earlier about whether or not we're fighting, um, the the argument is something out there. Right. Well, with these hard fights like that, um, it is more that you're fighting about how the other person has been has perceived something that you've done Mm -hmm. that then has injured them in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's not ever, it's not conflict about mm, something else. It's about, it's a conflict about how you are interacting with each other that then creates feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you for sharing that and yeah. and yeah, telling us about that. Um, I guess my my last question I have mm-hmm. here um, is: as Christians, why is communicating so important? So communicating re- important as Christians, you know, the Bible says over and over so much information about communicating. It says that we should um, love each other well and that we should encourage one another. And and, um, I think that, so it also says um, that you'll know we are Christians by our love. Uh, I think that communicating well with, especially with your spouse, your significant other, um, does a lot for furthering the cause of Christ. You know, we we are supposed to be different than the world, mm-hmm. right? We're, we are not supposed to um, do marriage the same way that the world does marriage. And we too often do. And that's why there's divorce rates are so high, even among Christians, is because we do marriage the way the world does marriage. But what God says is that we are to love our spouse well. Mm -hmm. And part of that loving well is communicating well. How how will they know that you love them well unless you communicate it? Mm -hmm. And maybe not just words, but you can communicate it a lot of a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Um when I think about communication, you know, the Bible is one of the biggest ways that God communicates to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he wrote to us this whole thing to communicate to us how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how marriage is supposed to be like him and the church, him and his bride. And so if we are supposed to echo in our, in our relationships, like, like Christ in the church, Mm -hmm. then what does that mean? Well, Maybe we should be communicating really well because God tried to God really communicated mm-hmm. with us. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think kind of going along with, with what you said, it's like almost an act of worship. I think mm. maybe communicating well with your partner in the fact that like the Lord gave you the capabilities to have feelings and emotions mm. and. Mm-hmm you know, he gave you a way to communicate those. And he also like gave me Aaron that I can, I can like give those feelings to, if that makes sense. I don't know. Mm. In my brain, it's like, I have all these feelings and sometimes I don't know how to get them out. And I I feel this really like heavy thing, but I can tell Aaron them and not even if it's about him, but if it's just about Right. life. Yeah. I can I can give them to them and Aaron holds them for a second. He holds the feelings so they're off my chest and he holds them. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And, and he, you know, and Aaron doesn't know that he does this. He says that he's really bad at it, but he's not. He actually is very good <laughs> at it. But he, 
he holds it and says, Ali, like he reminds me of the truths, right? He says, Ali, you're a child of God. You're loved. Mm-hmm. I love you. The Lord loves you. The family, your family loves you, you know, mm-hmm. reminds me of all these truths and says, you are strong enough to hold these feelings or like you're mm-hmm. strong enough to do this. And it, there's like a moment where we like hold them together and then he can give it back to me and it's less heavy, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And, and that's where I've like seen God at work the most in us and in each other is, is being able to, yeah, glorify the Lord in those hard times. And when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed or just flat or like flat out, just tired or something like that, like, and being able to trust Aaron enough with those big feelings and him reassuring me that like, those are feelings are normal or, or yeah, just because you said this one thing to this one girl doesn't mean she hates you, Allie, or, you know, (laughs) you know, things like that. And, and so sometimes I think, yeah, communicating with others and communicating with your partner is an act of of worship or glorifying God to and mm-hmm. saying okay God like thank you for for these feelings thank you even though they're hard mm-hmm. thank you for for helping me through them or thank you for mm-hmm. giving me a person to help me through it um mm-hmm. and I also think like those conversations of things can also spark more conversations about God and our faith too and like mm-hmm. we can Aaron and I can equally push each other in our faith through those times yeah. and and I think yeah those have been some of like the most beautiful in our relationship is having mm-hmm. those deep conversations of like why do I feel like this or why did this happen or whatever mm-hmm. and just like reminding each other like yeah God still loves you and and yeah. those like bringing us back to like those biblical truths again right mm-hmm. yeah that's so good and it reminds me a little bit about one of the I would say for me the best thing about marriage is that um, the way that Jonathan loves me is just a small glimmer of the way that God yes. loves me. Mm-hmm. And seeing that Jonathan will um, let me be who I am and not judge me for it mm-hmm. and actually encourage me to communicate more yes. and encourage me to be more true with myself and all of those things, it's just a small taste of what God really does and God accepts me for me yeah and delights in me for me Mm -hmm. and seeing Jonathan do that even though imperfectly helps me really understand more uh the depths of of God so Mm -hmm. I love that the the communication and and that as we give the gift of communication to other people we can really help them um see God Mm -hmm. see themselves through God's eyes yeah 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 I yeah, I think that's that's really good too. And like what you said about like this human relation love is just like a sliver of mm-hmm. of how God loves us. Like I think about that sometimes. Like I'll like look at Aaron. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I didn't think I could love you any more than I do like <laughs> like right now, which is maybe kind of funny. But then uh-huh. yeah, I'll think about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, like if I love Aaron this much, or if I love my parents this much, or my brother this much, like how much more does God love me? And like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That just like blows my mind sometimes. And I could like, Mm -hmm. you can think about that all the time and just be like super humbled of like, oh my gosh, we are incapable of so little love, if that makes sense. Right. Right? Like we can't even understand that agape love that God has for us. Mm -hmm. And, and I think communicating in relationships, like you said, can, can give us like a glimpse of, yeah, of what that agape love really is or like the root of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Allie, I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today <laughs> about you. yeah about communication. We communicated well about communication. Oh, thank, there you, you go. thank you. <laughs> uh, thank so, you. So um, yeah. So all of you that are watching, thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. And um, if you stop by the church, say how to hi to Allie at the mm-hmm. front desk, and um, let us know what other things we can talk about on these stories. We'd love to give you some more stories. Mm-hmm. Yes, thanks, April. Thanks.